All right, we're bringing it back to the bullpen. Well, you know, that really isn't the issue with the Astros. It's a lot of other things. Runners in scoring position, we've got a special guest. Mike Stanton and I sit down with Astros beat writer from LB, Brian McTaggart, on this edition. Back to the bullpen. I'm looking to the bullpen to bring my lefty in. Keep the lead and make your team look pedestrian. And send your world house will swing for the fish. You know it's money around here, man, I ain't talking expense. Strike one, heat a low in the way. Start a rally, but you better forget it. Strike two, off speed, same spot you caught looking. Get ready at the plate this time, you're not cooking. Strike three, swing it out of the zone. You ain't even touch it first. Tell me how they gonna drive you home. Walk your back, walk your back, looking like we ain't cool. The game's over, might as well put them back to the bullpen. Oh, yeah. That's right, and we're bringing it back to the bullpen. I got the guys with me, Mike Stanton. I got Brian McTaggart here tonight. Um, gentlemen, thank you all for tuning in with us. And look, you can find me at HM Wheelhouse on X, Instagram, and TikTok. You can find the show at iHeartRadio on Spotify, on X, and on Instagram at B2Bullpen. So check us out. Mike, tell everybody where they can find you and introduce our illustrious guest. Mike Stanton, 29, on formerly known as Twitter, X. Um, and, yes, yeah, so we have Brian McTaggart from MLB.com, who covers the Astros, does a great job, a good friend of ours. Uh, and, yeah, he's blessed us with his appearance this evening coming off of, well, let's just say not the best of situations coming out of Kansas City. Brian, how you doing tonight? I'm good. How you doing, Mike? Oh, we're doing well. So, you know, tell us what happened in Kansas City. I mean, what uh, what was your take? I mean, my goodness. I mean, coming off of these two games, uh, the two game split or the four game split out of the Texas Rangers. Now all of a sudden they go to Kansas City. Kansas City was playing good baseball, but my goodness, what was your take? Yeah, I mean, I thought they had a chance to go in there and win two or three, and you know, have a winning road trip. You know, even after they lost that first game in extra innings. You know, I thought, man, just just get these next two, and then you come back home with the winning road trip, and you know, start building from there. But uh, you know, sort of a uh, you know a complete disaster today with the with the pitching, the last thing you needed, and um, the day before didn't go much better than that. So um, I mean, they're really behind the eight ball right now with their pitching staff. I mean, they have five guys on the IL, and now you got two starts in four games where the starter doesn't get out of the first inning. Uh, the bullpen is already taxed here. I mean, we're we're 14 games in, and uh, you know we're talking about things that shouldn't happen until later in the season, where you know they're 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 trying not to use relievers. I mean, the game today. I mean, Joe Espada had to let Hunter Brown just try to get out of that inning and try to pitch two three innings, and he couldn't yeah. you know couldn't get out of the first, and and then he had to go to some bullpen guys that he didn't didn't want to go to, and then you have a position player pitching so. There's been a lot of shuffling between the bullpen and, and AAA the last few days. I think that might continue, but I mean they're running out of bodies, and it's uh, you know they got to get this turned around. Fortunately, I, I think they have the, the three starters going out. I think who have a chance to go a little bit deeper in France, and especially Javier and Ronel Blanco, they're they're two best starters at this point. So they really need those guys to step up this weekend against the Rangers. Yeah, you know, and Ronel Blanco has really been. Um, I think he's going to fill the role a lot like JP France did last year, but even in a more serviceable tone, just because it seems like he hates giving up hits to opposing hitters. And he's done a phenomenal job taking that role. But, you know, you, you have a pulse of the clubhouse, you know, day in and day out. Um, is this ball club, are they built to weather this storm? Because when you look on social media, you would think that the Astros have lost already 300 games and, you know, the run is over and you you see all this stuff and you hear it all. How is this club dealing with this just inside and out? And are they just like, OK, we just got to come out the next day and we just got to get a win? Well, I, th I think fans in Houston have been spoiled the last few years. And oh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you, you have a lot of fans who maybe uh, don't remember what it was like 10 years ago. And, and boy, you're four and 10 and, you know, the you know, the, the sky is falling here. And yeah, it's not good. But also, you know, the players haven't been through this either. I mean, Alex Bregman has never been on a team that's been six games under 500 or eight games under 500 in his life. So this is uncharted territory for him. You know, Altuve was on 300 lost teams, uh, but, you know, that was 10 years ago. So, um, you know, I think they, they're probably a little shell-shocked to hear where they're at right now. And uh, But, again, they got 148, 149 games to get this turned around. A long way to go. 
but they need to start showing signs of turning it around. I think in the pitching staff, particularly, we know they have, you know, a couple of issues offensively. Verlander could be back maybe next weekend, which would be huge. Um, and then maybe, you know, get into one of these starting pitchers, turn around, figure out what is going on with Hunter Brown, why, why he can't miss any bats. And then just hope that, that Blanco and, and Javier keep doing their thing. You know, Valdez, you know, who knows how long he's going to be out. It looks like he might start throwing soon. So that, that's a good sign as well. But um, it's really tenuous right now. But there is time to get this turned around for the Astros. And they got to get some of these pitchers back throwing deeper in games and get some of them healthy as well. Yeah, it is crazy that we're having this conversation. You're only two weeks into the season. And, yeah. you know, uh, coming out of spring training, things really couldn't have gone any worse just simply because now you've had – in, in the first two weeks, you've had two rookie pitchers make their big league debut in your rotation, and I'm not sure if either one of them was really prepared to come to the big leagues in this situation. So, you know, what does the depth look like for the Astros? Where do they go from here and just try and get somebody out there to get a few outs early in the game? Well, I mean, they're at the end of their starting pitching depth right now. Once they called up Aragetti – as far as guys you would call up and feel really, you know, good about Blair Henley wasn't really on that list, but that was just sort of out of necessity. Right. You know, a last second thing, it was his day to pitch and he was sort of thrown to the wolves. Um, you know, they moved AJ blue ball recently up from double A AA to triple A. I mean, he's his first game in triple A was really good, but he's nowhere near ready either. They really don't have any more starting p- pitching depth. That's why it's so important that the Verlander's coming back, maybe, uh, Framber Valdez, not long after him, they got to get these guys back and healthy. And then, you know, mid season, of course, they're going to get, uh, you know, maybe McCullers and Garcia, but, you know, Dana Brown counted their starting pitching depth all spring. And, you know, it did, it went eight or nine deep and voila, two weeks into the season, they're at the end of that right now. And they really cannot afford, uh, one more injury at all, considering the amount of innings that the bullpen has had to pitch because, um, they've really had to take on a big workload here because of the inefficiencies of the starting pitching. Yeah, definitely. And and that then, you know, puts puts the onus more on the offense when they're when they're out there and they're not doing what they necessarily need to do. But, Brian, you know, I, I actually put out in a tweet earlier um, in the in the American League, the Astros are top five in almost every major offensive category, but they're nine for 43 with runners in scoring position. The problem's not getting the guys on base. The problem is bringing them around to the home plate. And it's almost like a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, in this scenario, like you talked about Bregman, not really being here before you've got, you know, Kyle Tucker hit the ball really hard in Kansas city, but the ball just found the glove every time. And, you know, you're going against a guy that's probably a generational talent in Bobby Witt jr. And he seemed to find the grass every time he got up to the plate. He got, he went, he went yard twice today. Um, who do you think in this lineup besides Jordan Alvarez? can really make a difference when they come back home because you know they said it's it's great that we are that we're coming back home but is it great and what other hitter do you think needs to step up in these next two series because you got the Braves and the Rangers yeah I mean Yonder Diaz is off to a really good start he's now hitting in the middle of the lineup he's got to keep that up you know Bregman needs to you know come around a little bit more his swings in Kansas City looked a lot better you know, really stung a couple of balls on Wednesday. So it looks like he's close. I mean, he's always going to get on base just because his strike zone judgment is so good. Um, first base is just a black hole offensively. There's no, no other way to put it. Um, you know, abreu has been really, really bad. Singleton is, uh, you know, not a guy you can run out there every day. You know, and what do you do at first base at this point? They've dropped Abreu all the way down to eighth. He didn't play today. Um, you know, do you try to maybe get, you know, Caratini, some reps there. Diaz has played some first. Dubon, um, you know, we all know that they're, uh, that uh, Loprofito is playing first base now in AAA. He hit, he hit another home run today. How soon do you want to, you know, pull him up and say, let's, you know, let's see what you got at first base. I mean, that's, um, y- you have the, the, the contract situation with Abreu really complicates that because they owe him a lot of money. And I just don't think they're close to pulling the plug on him yet just because, um, they owe him that money. He got off to a slow start last year, did come around a little bit. But to your point earlier, I think their offense will come around. They've, they've got a ton of guys on base, and eventually they're going to start getting those guys in. I don't think there's any doubt. Um, but, 
you know, there's just no room for error right now with the offense. They just, they, you know, they got to score a ton of runs to overcome what's going on on the mound. But um, I still think at the end of the day, this is going to be one of the top five, six offenses in uh, Major League Baseball. But um, it just comes down to pitching at this point. Yeah, you talk to, to hitting coaches. What do they'll tell you? Managers will tell you the same thing. Just keep giving yourselves opportunities. Right. You know, the hits will come. It's just right now. Uh, in such a small sample size, they just haven't been able to get those hits to drive in the runs that they needed, and it's just compounded with the issues that they've had in the pitching staff. Now, let's change speeds a little bit. Let's talk about, you said there's five pitchers on the IL right now, so let's just kind of go through them really quickly one at a time. Let's start off with Fromber. You said that he seems to be getting close to throwing. Yeah, I mean, I think I think just throwing that, not off a mound, just picking up a ball and throwing again and see, see how that uh, elbow responds. Um, you know, we didn't get a ton of information the last few days about the extent of his injury. And, you know, he wasn't in Kansas city, so no one's really got a chance to talk to him. If you remember in the spring, when Urquidy came down with the inflammation, they said it would be, you know, 10 to 12 days before he picked up a ball again. And, you know, I'm thinking that perhaps that's going to be the case with Fromber. Maybe he's going to pick up a ball a little bit earlier, but, um, we should have a better idea on him, I think, by the weekend once we're able to talk to him and see where he's at. Okay, what about JV? I mean, we we talk, we've actually even heard uh, again. You know, you look at social media, which um, you know you got to take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> you know, we've heard JV talk or people talk about maybe trying to get him up here even quicker. I don't think that is really in the cards, uh, just simply because this Astros organization is always so conservative with bringing guys back early. But uh, what do you think about Justin Verlander? Well, it looks like he'll have one more rehab start this weekend. Um, he had the one last weekend. He got up to, you know, I think 65 pitches. Um, if he can get up to 75, 80 pitches in this one, then I think maybe next weekend when they go to Washington, you could see him back on the mound for the first time, um, which would be a really big boost. But, you know, he's got one more re re rehab start, one more hurdle to clear. But it, it looks like he's getting closer you know, he's he hasn't really had any setbacks. He came to camp w coming off shoulder inflammation, so it was just a matter of getting that pitch count built up. Um, and they took it really slow with him just because he is 41 years old and, he, you know, he did have an arm injury a couple of years ago. But it, it looks like he could be in the rotation maybe a, a week from now or next weekend when they're in Washington, which would be great news for the Astros. And so, you know, just a quick update on, of course, we know Garcia and McCullers are – are they are they still post All Star break coming back? Is there a possibility we see them sooner than that? There's a possibility. Um, you know, uh, Garcia's off the mound now, which is a really good sign for him, and he's almost one full year from from having his TJ TJ surgery. So um, I still think we could see him uh, maybe in July. McCullers, I think it's a little bit harder to tell because his rehab has been. Um, it just, uh, I don't know. It just seems like it's, uh, been very regimented. Um, and he's on a, a very uh, dedicated path at this point. And, uh, I, I think if he comes back in July, whether it's pre all-star break or post all-star break, I think he'd be very, very happy about that. But those two guys still have a lot of throwing to do. They got to go through the live BPs, go out of minor league rehab. So, um, still a lot of work before you, you see them in Minute Maid Park. Yeah. There's a lot of boxes that have to be checked. Yeah. Brian McTavert, MLB.com, covering the Astros. Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night at the ballpark at Minute Maid Park. All right. We'll see you out there. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Brian. All right. All right. So that was that was Brian McTaggart. You know, he yep. is He's um, the man. He is the man. He's got all the information. He does. And sharing that. And that that's actually good to know about Garcia off the mound. I, I didn't know. Right. That. So yeah, that's you know, the thing, the really thing inspired. is the Astros have always been very cryptic about their information. And that's actually something I didn't know. I didn't know yeah. Garcia was actually throwing off the mound. Um, you heard it here first. It has that's not cool. been, it has not been that long since his Tommy John. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed that there's no setback because they could definitely use, you know, the innings that Luis Garcia can give you. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, you know, Mike, there, there's there's a lot of talk right now. You know, Joe Espada is a first year manager. Joe Espada, I mean, being a first year manager, especially with a club that has such high expectations, has got to come with a heavy weight, a heavy burden. Joe Espada has been a pro's pro, and when I got to interview him back in February, 
just seemed like he was primed and ready for the job. Yeah. But nothing prepares you, not only for your <laughs> first season, but nothing prepares you for the season he's having. Right. Um, when when you were pitching, you you got to you got to sit, I mean, you got to be coached by really good managers. Yeah. What is what is his like what is his main job? What is his main focus as a manager? Because he's got all this pressure, you know, he's you know, he's taking the mantle, he's trying to carry the torch. And the right. torch really isn't on fire right now. No, well, his job is to just make sure everyone, I don't want to say keeps getting their work in because they, they've got so many veterans and so many professionals in that clubhouse, but just just make sure everyone stays focused on what you're, you know, do, you know, what you're trying to do. You don't buy into you know, what social media is saying. You don't buy into, you know, the record that, you know, this is still a big time quality baseball club. You know, if you went through this in July, yeah, we would still be talking about it, but, you know, uh, the sky would not be falling like it is right now. So, you know, and, and, and Brian was, was, uh, was right about, you know, these guys, other than, other than Altuve, none of them really been through this, but it's still, you know, they know that this is a quality ball club. They know that they are much better than what their record states. And, you know, so Joe Espada is stay positive. Just keep putting it out there. Keep, you know, keep being Joe Espada. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's an extremely good communicator and he's going to just, you know, act like there's nothing going on because that's what he has to do. Even if, um, you know, it's kind of a duck on water situation, right? you know, uh, yeah, they, there may be some turmoil going on in the belly underneath the water level, but above water level, Hey, everything's cool. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's, that's what I think some people will be quick to criticize. Oh, well this player or this manager yeah. doesn't appear to like, they think it all has to be outward. Kind of like today, um, Aaron Boone, um, let an umpire know, Hey, I didn't like that call. Mm -hmm. The umpire said, what'd you say? And he's like, that was a terrible call, and you know it. And the umpire said, and then Boone, Boone went after him. What did he do? Boone got tossed. But yeah. you, because Aaron Boone is that manager that goes yeah. out there and fights for his guys. You know, the famous, my guys are savages in the box. <laughs> that's and, right. Great but, line. I think, but I think that's what everybody expects. Like, if that's not happening, then the guys or the manager doesn't care. No. But that is Aaron Boone's personality, also. Exactly. You know, but Aaron was a fiery player, and you know Joe Espada. Well, I don't know what kind of player Joe Espada was. I know as a coach that you know he'll he'll get on you when he needs to. But he is just such a good communicator. Open door policy. He's doing everything he can. He's going to stay positive because he knows that's going to work better than going in yelling and screaming. You know, if you do that all the time, then it kind of loses its effect. You know, you got to take, you know, you got to, you know, got to pick your, your battles here, but you know, that's not going to do this team any good. It's not that these guys aren't trying. It's not that these guys aren't grinding out the at-bats with runners in scoring position. It's not like the pitchers aren't trying to get the dudes out. It's just not happening right now. So the best approach is, Calm, cool, collected. Everything is right where it needs to be. The team is going to do what they're supposed to do eventually. Well, you know, one of the bright spots, and you talk about staying always positive, one of the bright spots has been Seth Martinez. I mean, oh yeah, you know, they let 200 innings walk in relief pitching, mm -hmm. and that is really starting to, it makes you wonder, gosh, you know, should they have kept at least one or two of those guys? Maybe they couldn't keep all three. Right. You know, with with the Josh Hader side and everything, but for Seth Martinez, and you were in the bullpen um, for quite a long time in the major mm -hmm. leagues. How key is it to have that one guy that you know? Hey, guys, Seth's getting on the mound. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna grind out some innings. Yeah, is that big for the rest of the bullpen? Because look, Brian Abreu, you gave up. Um, he he gave up a tank today. Mm -hmm. And he's been very susceptible to giving up runs early yeah. in the season. But Seth is calming that bullpen just a little bit. Oh, it's paramount. 
I mean, you have to have at least one, if not multiple guys in the bullpen that can give you multiple innings. Um, I, I know when I was pitching, there was a lot of times, you know, a young guy come out, uh, gives us three innings, gives up five runs. Dude, I'm shaking his hand uh, when we get into the clubhouse just simply because he did his job. You know, his job was to make sure we didn't burn the rest of the bullpen that's going to affect you for the next, not for the next, for, not just tomorrow. It's going to affect you for the next week, maybe even further than that. So, you know, you you got to have those guys that can go out there and give you multiple innings and save your back end of the bullpen, guys, so that, you know, when it is a tight game, you know, you have those guys rested and ready to go. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, when I'm ready to go, I make sure that I get my hair cut at state-of-the-art barbershop. Um, Ever has got the hookup. I'm telling you, if you guys are in the Friendswood area, 1616 South Friendswood Drive, go by and stop and tell Ever that back to the bullpen, Mike and Brett sent you, and get your edge up. They will do beard trims. They do, I mean, hot towels. I mean, they do it all. It's a great setup. They got a cool wall. I've actually donated some of my personal items that you can see, some really cool autograph items that he has up there on the wall. So make sure you check them out today. And, hey, guess what, Mike? We're on iHeartRadio. Yeah, we are. That Believe is it. That is that's, big time. We, that's big league. That is big league. iHeartRadio yeah. is big league. That's right. So we're iHeartRadio. We're on Instagram. We're we're on YouTube. We're on Spotify as well and X. But so this ball club, 4 and 10, um, we know it's a long season. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Gosh, I've, I can't tell you how many times I've told people <laughs> that it's a marathon, not a sprint. And they just don't right. listen. But now coming home. You have a bullpen that's taxed. You have your three starters, like Tags mentioned, that are the guys that are sustaining the innings. If you can get off to a good first three games, then maybe you have a little bit easier time with the Braves. But if they have to burn those bullpen with the Rangers, that 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 you know title bout with the I mean the Braves are just a perennial powerhouse right sure. now. There's no slowing them down. Ronald Acuna just keeps doing he's a beast his own things. Um, so going into this, what is the key? Is it the starters going as long as they can? Is it the relief pitchers? Of course, we know all three phases of the game need to be working, but sure. Which one needs to start off best? Are we focused on the starters first? Well, you have to, I mean, that's, that's what starts the game. And right. so, yeah, I mean, they're going to be the tone setters and, you know, you, you would love to get, you know, a few zeros in those first couple innings just to let the team get Kansas city out of the, you know, in the past, which they're already professionals and they do that, but you know, you don't want that situation that you give up a couple runs in the first inning and, and, you know, the team's like, all right, well, here we go again. No, put up a couple zeros, but you know, you don't, you can't even look at the series. What you have to look at is tomorrow's game. You mm -hmm. do, you know, win the game, win the inning, win the at bat, win the pitch. That's what that's what you have to do. You don't you can't because when you start looking at the big picture, you know, you have Mount Everest in front of you, you know. Yeah, they're only six games back, but you only played 14. Uh right. or yeah, you know, they're only six games under, but they're all you know, they've only played 14. So when you look at that, that's it, that's that's too daunting. What you have to do is you play tomorrow, you win tomorrow. That's it. And you have that, you know, you have that mentality because you can't do anything about what's already happened. You can't do anything about what's going to happen. You have to worry about present day, the job at hand. You know, it's kind of like growing up when we would go to Florida all the time. So I'm from Florida. I learned not to get excited when you first got into Florida. Because <laughs> if you're going to central Florida, <laughs> that's like, right. Yes. A long ways to go. You're only halfway there. Oh my God. Tallahassee <laughs> is great, but it's not. I made that when I was with the Braves, we were in West Palm beach. Actually, that's where okay, we did. Yeah. And yeah, it was the same way. Okay. We're in Florida. Yeah. We're not even halfway yet. We, we're in, we still got a long way to go. And that, and you know, and then I remember driving out West. Um, we were, I actually played uh, volleyball for my university and we were going out to the university of Arizona for the national tournament. We got to Tucumcari, and there's a sign in Tucumcari that says L.A. 1,010 miles. And I'm like, <laughs> if I was driving to L.A., I would literally go to the nearest airport and fly. I would right. not drive anymore. But let's but let's kind of wrap this up with this. The offensive numbers are not bad. No, Mike. they're not. 
They've got like I said, what we have what they have to do is they have to keep giving themselves opportunities. We've been saying right. this for years because you know every team goes through these spells, and again, the sample size is so small. But you look at all the other peripheral numbers, you know, batting average and 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 even even slugging percentage. I mean, they're doing fine. They're doing exactly yeah. what they're supposed to do. They just haven't been able to get those runs across the plate. But the only way you're going to do that is by keep giving yourself opportunities because as soon as you start you know doing more, trying to grind out the at bats even more, now all of a sudden the batting average is going to go down. You know, so you yeah. got to keep, you know, just that even keel and these guys are good at this cuz they've been doing it for a long time. Keep that even keel and just go and have your quality at bats and try and stack those together, get a few hits uh in a row and see if you can score some runs. That's right. It, it it's always, you know, it's all about the the runs in scoring position. Nine right. for forty three, a two hundred two average. But when you go back and look at the box score, it's amazing. Ten hits, thirteen hits, sure. nine hits, two runs, three runs. You know, they had like fifteen or seventeen hits against the Rangers, but they scored ten runs. And right. I remember growing up, my dad was always my coach, and his his favorite line to say was, "A hit means a run." And he always told us, if you have eight hits, you should have eight runs. And we're like, what? Like, that was his philosophy. <laughs> right. should, everybody should get on base and everybody that's should. A, that's a, no, that's, that's, a, that's a tough goal. It is a tough goal. <laughs> that's a tough goal. That, we never got lower than third place in our league. So we, we, we're always one of the top teams. We kind of had a run like the Astros did with him as our coach. Um, but uh, any, any, any closing thoughts on, on the Astros, on – the coming series. I know you're going to be covering some of the games as well. I'll be there tomorrow um, night on Friday. All right. Yeah, definitely. Um, so tell us, man, just thoughts, thoughts going into this series at home against the Rangers. Fan is fan is short for fanatic. And I know that it's emotions and, and emotions are high right now. And you know, this isn't a situation that it's not just the team. I mean, the fan base hasn't been through this in, you know, a decade. Right. So uh, there's still so much baseball to be played. This is still a quality team. There's no time to, this is no time to, you know, you know start selling your season tickets <laughs> or whatever. This right. team is going to be right where we expect it to be. And you need to have that confidence that they're going to do this. And, you know, you never know. This is one of the great things we love about baseball. It could all start tomorrow night. That's right. It could. It only takes one swing of the bat. And, you know, I'm excited because this season, Mike, we're going to really get into this. And as we go further along, we will bring in other storylines of what's going sure. on around Major League Baseball. But look, if you see either one of us at the ballpark, say hi. Let us know you listen to Back to the Bullpen. Who knows? I may be there tomorrow night, too. Um, we'll give you a high five or something. But just keep the faith know that it's going to be okay and maybe next show we might we might air an old school commercial that Mike <laughs> from the 1990s awesome. I Jim that someone shared with me so uh I'll have to make sure I get his graces off the camera um and we'll we'll watch it and just reminisce about 1990s yeah. baseball Awesome. Hey, and if you yeah, if you're at the stadium tomorrow night, come by our our set in center field at uh, Space City Home Network. Uh, we got an hour pregame tomorrow, so come by and say hello. Definitely. Hey, Mike, thank you so much. Thank you all for tuning in to Back to the Bullpen. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hit 200. We hit. Uh, 200. There we go. Nice one. So we just keep climbing the charts. So y'all have a good one, guys. Adios. I'm looking to the bullpen to bring my lefty in. Keep the lead and make your team look pedestrian. It's in your wheelhouse, we'll swing for the fish. You know it's money around here, man, I ain't talking expense. Strike one, heat a low in the way, you can't hit it. You know you want to start a rally, but you better forget it. Strike two, off speed, same spot, you're caught looking. Get ready at the plate, this time you're not cooking. Strike three, swing it out of the zone. You ain't even touch it first. Tell me how they gonna drive you home. Walk your back, walk your back, looking like...